All right, Spiff. Let's talk about Alchemist. Um, so we've got a replay here. I just went through your match history and just found a replay that I was interested in. Um, we're going to talk about it since I think you do some things well and I think you do some things poorly. But I know you're at least interested in the uh, replay analysis. And this is probably the hero that you would pick since you seem to be favoring it recently. So Alchemist is pretty strong um, versus a couple different kinds of drafts. So he's really good versus drafts that don't have a really great sustained fight. So Invoker is a good example of that, where like he presses his spells and he kind of runs out of damage spells. So it's like once he's pressed Meteor, once he's pressed Deafening Blast, he just kind of runs out of damage. Um, Axe is a very similar hero, really suffers to heroes that he can't burst inside of Call. Uh, heroes like Willow and Dazzle just kind of get run at and chopped and they don't really have any way of protecting themselves. Um, like I, I know they have Grave and they have Shadow Realm and stuff, but like their team fight is ver really, really scuffed because if they're using their spells aggressively, like Dazzle, Shallow Grave, and his Phantom Assassin, for example, then he just kind of gets run set and dies. Uh, P is pretty good versus you, I would say, because she has very high physical damage, um, and you're a pretty low armor hero, and she can burst you uh, relatively easy, especially with the armor reduction of like a Dazzle uh, or Alacrity from an Evoker, um, who generally goes Vessel. So. This is a fine alchemist game. Like I would be okay, I would be okay picking alch. I'm not sure what order you picked it in, but that's something to consider. Um, so you picked second phase, and let your void last pick. And you saw, like you would have only seen Willow and the Dazzle. So I mean, it's fine. I I think alch is one of the heroes that um, the higher up in the ladder you go, the later you have to pick him. Like you can probably first pick this hero in most games, and as long as A is banned, you're not going to have too much of an issue. But just kind of generally good practice to think about the heroes you're picking and don't just pick it because you like alchemist pick it because it's a good alch game um like for example anti-mage i love playing anti-mage don't always get to pick them because if it's a bad am game then i don't enjoy just losing on am um all right so we'll hop in this replay and we'll talk about a couple things um that i feel like you should improve on so you don't get tangos from your support uh, i'm not sure if you asked or not but that's something that you should make a habit of um I play in on this account that's lower MMR than yours. If I ask for tangos, people generally give it. Um, I don't beg. I just say tangos. And if they give me tangos, then awesome. So your team picks up three runes, which is nice. And you go for a circlet, which I think is a pretty big mistake. You're Lenny versus a hero that's ranged, and you are a melee. And you're going to need a salve in order to deal with the harass that's coming out, or should be coming out from this invoker. Uh, the other thing about buying additional regen is you don't really care if he hits you five times while you get all the last hits because you have a salve coming. Uh, and Alchemist does really, really well with uh, having to take Harass and then buy a regen because he gets bonus gold from his CS. So we'll watch your block. Your block is fine. I generally dislike your camera placement in the mid lane. Uh, so like this is your player perspective. This is for your cameras. And I don't really understand why so much of this real estate is completely wasted. Like, you can have your camera here, and then you can see more of the enemy side of the map. Or you can have your camera centered on the creeps. Um, this is kind of like a good, better, best, but here it's like, where you have it, it's only looking at things you don't really care about, and it's not looking at places that you're going to get ganked. So let's say there's a Mirana uh, on the enemy team, then maybe my camera's more like this, because I'm looking for arrows coming down from the four position. If it's a five position Mirana, then maybe your camera placement is fine. But, um, like, you always want to put your camera in, especially mid, since you can just kind of leave it there for the... Um, majority of the laning phase you want to put it in the spot that's going to protect you the most and give you the most uh, useful information and this seems like a small petty thing but like living to a dark willow gank that you maybe could have seen if your camera placement was better later in this uh, laning phase is like a great example of this kind of stuff so you play the first wave okay um the first wave is really really important on every mid because it's exactly enough XP to get to level 2. So if any hero gets a deny, then the other hero won't get level 2 off of the first wave. Um, there's no XP gained or lost by missing or getting a last hit, but the denies do remove an, any amount. I don't remember what the percentage is. I think it's like 20% of the XP or something you don't get. Um, but even if it was only 1 XP, it would still be enough to prevent you from getting level 2. Okay, so... Um, you get a deny, which is good, and you get two of the last hits, which I would say is respectable. Um, ideally, obviously, you get more, but like practicing last hitting is uh, something you can do in your free time, and I don't really need to talk about it too much. 
Uh, here, I feel like you should be drawing aggro, and judging by your mouse movements, you kind of get the same idea as well. However, it doesn't appear as though you have any clue how aggro actually works, and so you're just kind of like right-clicking on him and expecting something to happen. So aggro is an aura uh, around around your hero. So when you right-click on an enemy hero, whether or not it's this invoker or you look bottom and you draw aggro off the axe or hop, it doesn't really matter where, around your hero, and I believe a 300 radius, you get this aggro uh, buff. Basically, it's an invisible buff. And enemy creeps, if they're inside of that buff for the duration that that buff is going, then they will turn to attack you. So if you want to draw aggro, we'll go back and look at how you're doing this. You actually have to be closer to the creeps when you do this. So let's watch your mouse. So you first click on him here, but the aggro had worn off before you actually got to the creeps. Which means you weren't able to draw aggro. Which, like, you didn't really get denied out or anything, which is fine. A better player would punish you more for that. Um, but, like, you miss CS because now you're last hitting under tower, under cold snap. Instead of, like, being able to last hit those creeps while invoker is preoccupied doing something else. So, like, you can only do one thing at a time on invoker or on alk, right? It's like... Well, let's take Invoker, for example, because he doesn't have, like, an AoE Acid Spray or something. Like, how can CS and kind of harass at the same time, like, based off of that. Um, but with your actual hero, not including your spells, you can only last it or you can harass. And so if you kind of split the creep wave up in a way to where Invoker has to pick between CS and another tower or harassing you while you last it, um, no matter what he chooses, he's missing out on something, right? Like, either he's harassing you, and that's annoying, but he's missing last hits, or he's getting last hits, and you're also getting last hits. And in every mid matchup, you want to think about who cares more about the harass or CS battle, right? Um, generally, you don't want to miss any last hits if possible. And so you want to like harass and then turn around and last it and then harass and turn around and last it uh, and stuff like that, right? Um, but in this particular matchup, in every Alk matchup, the enemy mid is losing if Alk gets to farm. Even if they are harassing him, or even if they are also farming, the Alk, Alk wins the, we each get one CS, um, like, matchup, right? Because you get the bonus gold from your passive. So, drawing aggro and drawing aggro correctly is going to force this trade situation where it doesn't favor Invoker. And even if you're not better at last hitting them, or better at harassing than him, just the fact that he has to choose one or the other makes it a favorable trade for you. So, you laned for two minutes, and I feel like every time Invoker's clicked you, you've kind of walked back and done nothing. We'll talk about this questionable Ashes spray in a second. And you haven't used any of your tangos. So I feel like you have this idea in your head where getting hit by the enemy is bad, and I want to avoid it. Um, but I would say a lot of times, like, it's okay to get hit by the enemy as long as you're accomplishing something. So you have all of this region, and you should have bought a salve. And so if I was playing this Alk, I would have taken a lot more harass from this Invoker because I was positioned more aggressively to get better last hits, because you only have four last hits out of three waves. So you've gotten 30% of the last hits, 33% of the last hits, which is pretty bad. Um, you should be looking at like 80% pretty easily. And if you add up jungle creeps, you can actually get over 100% efficiency. Um, so like the fact that you're not using your regen in order to guarantee that you get these last hits is a mistake. Because if you have 12 last hits here and you have perfect CS, but you've had to buy a salve, like, don't you, aren't you okay with that? Like, that's so much more gold in your pocket, which is really what uh, matters. Here, again, like, your aggro, don't really understand how it works. Like, you draw aggro from far away, and then you walk up close. Um, that's something you can fix relatively easily. And then we'll go back and talk about this acid spray, because I think this is, like, very, very close to being correct, but you're just doing it wrong. So, after you push out this wave... Where you miss every last hit. You level up your acid spray, and then you go and you acid spray this camp randomly. So if you had waited, like let's look at what you do before the, the two minute mark. Like the next 13 seconds, let's look at what you do here. Okay. So now it's 2 minutes and 10 seconds. So you got one CS, 
the next 20 something seconds. And I think you could have double stacked. If you don't double stack these camps here, which these are fabulous camps for you to farm, like these are really good, so it's like lucky that you get those camps. Um, like stack this camp. It's like pick a camp to stack. Um, the wave was pushing under his tower, like your creeps aren't gonna die that fast. And even if you miss that one CS, but you get this camp stacked, that's already a better trade for you, right? The only thing you really care about is your last hit number on Alk, because your passive does all the work for you um, with higher levels. So, like, setting yourself up for future farm, even if you miss that one last hit, is, like, so much of a better trade. Like, so, so much better. Um, you can acid spray this camp, like, hit this camp, walk up, and let's say you miss two creeps, right? That's about how much you would miss, because you would be getting back to the wave about here, and, and the tower would be hitting one of the creeps, um, and you maybe miss the last hit, right? So you... You stack two camps and you miss two CS. That just seems like so obvious to me that that's a, a favorable trade for you. Um, but instead, like you spend mana, you don't stack, and then you miss all the last hits anyway. So, and there are some matchups, like there are some matchups where you just don't have nearly as much damage as the enemy hero. Um, this one's like pretty even, especially with Azza Spray and the Quilling Blade. But like, Let's say this guy is just the biggest freaking god of CS, and every single creep that's in here getting denied. If you're stacking camps, then you're going to get your last hits anyway. And you're, like, not getting last hits in the lane, and you're not stacking camps. So, like, effectively you've done nothing but leech off of yourself. Then you go and acid spray this camp again for 2 CS. I just don't think that's a good use of your mana. Like, again, it's, like, right at the minute mark. You can go and double stack this. Like, one creep isn't even going to die. Yeah, it's like, you would have stacked, you would have walked back, maybe you missed one creep. So, but this, like, your movement in the lane, where the lane gets pushed under his tower, like, right before the, the minute mark, and then you do nothing, is so freaking close to being correct. It's, like, astounding to me um, how close this is. Because, like, this is what you want. You want to farm this wave under your tower, then the next wave will come, you'll farm it, you know, maybe it's under your tower, maybe it's not, but you'll farm it with acid spray. Or something, right? Even if it just right clicks. And then the wave is going to push under his tower. And then you get to go and double stack a camp. And like you could have stacked, assuming you didn't mess up the stacks, you could have two triple stacks here. And then as soon as you get level 5 or level 6, you can just run and take it. Like Invoker's not going to freaking take your stack. Axe might. Um, but like, pretty unlikely. So here again, the wave is pushing. Like, and all this stuff is just rinse and repeat. It's like, you're going to do the same thing over and over. So, like, here, this is fine. Like, you're not stacking, but whatever. You're, like, pressuring him. I would be looking for the power rune now, because it's four minutes. You know it's not bottom. So, like, Invoker goes and he gets a regen for free. Um, like, you could have used that mana. And this is good as well. Like, Acid Spray, walk up into the wave, tank two or three hits, the entire wave dies. And then, again, you sit here and you do effectively nothing with your time. Like, go farm this freaking small camp. Go get ready for runes. Go stack. Like, why are you not walking here to secure these bounties, stacking this camp, and then walking back to the lane? Um, small note on the Evoker matchup. It doesn't draw aggro to hit the Forge Spirit, so it's just a free CS for you, especially with Acid Spray. Um, and this Invoker is playing, like, extraordinarily passive. I feel like with the amount of regen that you've purchased and used, he should just like kill you over and over. And then you come and you ult and like I'm not a fan of this ult. I don't think it accomplishes anything. Uh, like Invoker 6 now, so he has kill threat on you if you're low HP and don't have ult. Um, you're probably not very familiar with Invoker spells, but generally Invoker players and he is an Invoker player because he's platinum, so he'll at least know the combo. Uh, when they go exhort, they get level 6, they invoke Cold Snap and Tornado. And what will happen is he will cold snap you, he will tornado, and he will invoke meteor, and then you'll get cold snapped with a meteor on your face. And if you don't have your ulti in order to get the regen to avoid the damage, and if you didn't know this already, your ult is a dispel. So it's a dispel type basic dispel. So it will dispel the cold snap from this guy. It will also dispel things like um, Cursed Crown from Willow, or Bramble Maze, or uh, Poison Touch. And so if possible, like if you're not going to get CC'd to death, which this game you're not, uh, you want to like have your ulti as a backup plan, right? Like, go to this lane, and then if Invoker presses spells on you, you can ulti, and then you can continue the lane. But, like, you just ult because you have it. 
And then you go and like, again, this is like such an abysmal acid spray. Like you can just acid spray this camp right here. Like you get it on the very edge. The creeps will walk around these stairs and come down. Then you hit these creeps once and you walk into the acid spray and you farm two camps with one with one acid spray in the same time. And it's the minute mark and you're still not stacking. I, I don't get it. Like, do you not want stacks? <laughs> so you also don't go for power runes. Like there's a DD bottom. I would bet my firstborn child that you don't even think about it and Evoker gets a DD and then all of a sudden, like, he has kill threat on the map. Like, again, you're just ulting. You're getting, like, two CS per wave or something. And here you survive because you have the region of your ulti. But, like, if you just ult like crazy, like, this Invoker, if he's a better player, he just waits, like, he just waits. He waits your ulti to come out and for you to walk back to lane, and then he kills you here. Um, so you end up getting gone on by this Willow. You need to die. Like, the Willow ganked, it was fine. But again, like, you're showing in lane across the enemy stairs with no vision, and you know Invoker has a DD, and you don't have your ulti. It's like, at a certain point that, like, this lane... When the enemy team hits their spike, like Invoker hits 6 and has a DD, you can't be in that lane without ulti. At all. So, like, just go farm. If you had stacks to fall back on, then, like, you can go and farm your stacks. But it's 7 minutes in, you haven't farmed this camp. And every single time you had farmed this camp, you could have farmed both camps, like, very easily. Just better acid sprays. So like there, if you acid spray, like a second later, you just get the stack. You might have been trying to get the stack and just failed, which is better than not even trying to go for the stack. Here, like, why do you live? Because you have ult. But was it on cooldown going up into that? Yes, it was. It was on cooldown for no reason. Which means that you should have died. So here again, it's like every single one of your acid sprays, you don't think at all about how to connect two camps together with acid spray. Like you never think about it. At 10 minutes, you finally farm the small camp. I would probably be farming that. If I wasn't stacking, I would probably be farming that as often as possible. So my like game plan, acid spray is a 22 second cooldown, which means you get an acid spray twice, or you get, I get an acid spray at least once per wave, is let's say I get level three, I acid spray the wave, I push it out, I go and I farm a small camp, and then I acid spray the wave, I push it under his tower, and I go and double stack camps for myself, if I can. Now, like, that flow's not going to be perfect every time, because you're not always going to be able to farm the wave correctly, Invoker's going to do different things, like, maybe acid sprays on cooldown from pushing the wave, so you can't double stack, you know, it's like, um, but this small camp, you don't generally have to acid spray, so, like, you can acid spray the wave, you can walk to this camp and farm it, and then you can choose to either acid spray the wave, or to go and stack for yourself, um, but, like, your efficient efficiency is so low. Even, like, for a non-alchemist hero, your efficiency is low. Um. Like, I have no clue why you don't have 100 CS right now. Here. That's, like, one of the better camps. Like, and these kind of movements are better, right? Like, you're pushing out the wave. You know this PA can't touch you if you have ult. miss every CS there, good grief. So you do get Radiance. When you get your Radiance, your farming patterns change a little bit because you have this kind of power spike and you can also think about showing up to fights. Um, something that I feel like you can do generally on Alk is you can like, you can get phase boots for your Radiance. Um, you don't always have to if you're going travels and you feel like you have an easy lane, which that lane was really easy. Um, then like it's fine. Unfortunately, you block your small camp there. Like, this is good tower pressure. There's 
a fight going on bottom, you show up. I think this is a good fight to show up, no matter... Like, the only risky thing is if the fight goes bad, you don't have your ult. Um, because you ulted for no reason before. So, every time you ult, you need to think, am I going to fight in the next 55 seconds or go to a lane? And if the answer is yes, then you shouldn't press your ult. So if you're going to farm for the next 55 seconds, then it's fine to ulti. Because it will be off cooldown for the next, like, engagement. But that's like, I'm not showing in waves unless there's vision kind of stuff, right? Um, so, like, showing up to this fight with your ulti coming off cooldown is kind of risky. Like, it works because you're very strong. Um, but it, like... That's a risk that you have to be aware of. Something you should be doing to be more efficient is like... Radiance has a pretty large AoE and does quite a bit of damage to creeps. So like, you can leave these camps earlier. You don't actually have to get the last hit. Like, while you're melee range. You can just let your Radiance do it. Um, and like, you'll get a feel for it over time. But it will save you, you know, let's say it saves you five seconds in between camps. Like, that's quite a big, uh, quite a big deal when you think about, you know, you farm a hundred camps in a game. To save 500 seconds of farming. And like, these kinds of tricks is why uh, better players, like, will look so much stronger, so much faster. And it will also look like they're able to be more active, and it's because their movements are so much more crisp. Um, like, they get farm, and they fight, and they push. Here, like, I don't know why you ult. Like, if you think about this, if you have your ulti there, you can just ulti, purge off the urn and cold snap, and then you can walk away. Uh, instead, you, like, man up on him, even though you can't, like, you can't man fight, just because your ult is up. And then we'll talk about itemization real quick. Uh, and you guys end up winning this game, because you're, like... Even though you're pretty far behind at my terms, like you're still farther ahead than the enemy team because the enemy team is also not playing efficiently. Uh, but itemization, why do you have a Radiance and an AC? Don't these like do different things? Um, another thing to think about is like kill threat. So heroes that kill you on the enemy team is this like Vessel, Cold Snap, Invoker locking you down forever so you can't move while PA hits you. If you have a Manta style or a BKB, they can't do that. And I don't think you would want to buy a BKB, like, this early in the game. Because if you BKB every time you get cold snapped, pretty soon you're just going to feed because your BKB is always on cooldown. Or it's very short. So another thing to consider is your Manta illusions get Radiance. So you can send your illusions out in lanes to push when it's not safe for you. So, like, this top tower, for example. Let's go look at all the different ways that you die here. And that could have been avoided. Alright, so here, you're hitting this tower. You should always, like, think about this tree spot. Like, you need to know all the different places that people can TP without you seeing them. So, like, we can see it because of the replay, but, like, you can't see it. Otherwise, I think you would have behaved differently. But even all the same, look at where bottom is. Like, look at this bottom wave. And nobody is farming this. Now, that means they're doing something else. And same with mid. Like, if you even looked mid, you would actually see that these guys are TPing as they took the tower. Like, you literally see this guy TP top on the map, but you don't pay attention because you have to look at the script that you're last hitting. I don't know why. But, like, let's say you push this tower, you drop acid spray, you pop your ulti, you pop your manta, your manta illusions go and cut this next wave or deal damage to the tower, and then you farm this camp, and you farm this camp, and you farm back to your triangle, because you popped ulti and you can't show on the map for another 55 seconds. So, like, you could have pressured the map more, gotten more farm and not fed if you had different itemization and if you were looking at the available uh, information that was on the map. All of which are good. So like this wave that's pushing right now, this tower, would be dead. So even if you feed there, you would be alive before the next, like this, let's look at the deep wave. Like, because you would have killed that wave, this is the wave that would have come to push the tower. Which means it would have had effectively nothing to do for the rotation at the end of that. Even if you even if you die, 
which ideally you don't, but you know. Kind of unfortunate. I feel like you shouldn't be showing to this fight, because like there's other objectives on the map, like pushing out these waves that need to be pushed. Um, and like you don't have your beekeeper and that's or a manta, and you need like one of those items in order to fight. So you've like really, really cucked your own game now. Because you were behind in the first place, and then you bought the wrong items, and then you didn't look at the map, and then you died twice for no reason, and now like the game is really hard. This is really risky. I would have at least scanned if it was up. Looks like it's on cooldown. And all these acid sprays, it's like connect these two camps and farm them at the same time. Like this takes you twice as long as it would take me. So if you're quicker with that, and then you don't walk to where you have vision of your allied heroes hitting creeps, then you could have like walked top, stacked the ancients, or stacked the triangle, and then farm this top wave, push it out with your manta illusions that you should have, and then run back and farm the stacks. Now like, your bristle is griefing your farm here, and for the most part your entire team is griefing your farm, because none of the waves are pushed and they don't want to show, which is just like, that's bad on them. Uh, but, like, Manta allows you to do that kind of stuff without putting yourself in danger. So, I think it's fine that you don't push that next wave, because you don't know where people are. Just say it for the millionth time, if you had Manta illusions, then you could push it for free. That BKB was completely unnecessary. You guys should be looking at Roche right now. You don't really care too much about this tier 2. That's good. Looks like you're the one who's pinging it out. Now, you should be taking the Aegis. The reason you should be taking the Aegis is because you're the high ground hero. So, Void is going to be standing behind you while you hit high ground. And if they go on a BKB Aegis Alk with ulti, and they manage to kill him... Odds are that your team is going to be able to do something about it and that it used a lot of spells, which means they're not going to have spells for your second life. Void, I think, is much more susceptible to just getting bursted instantly by, like, Call plus PA plus Sunstrike than you are. Um, and, like, then he comes back to life, and the same thing can happen, like, all over again. You're a lot more survivable, and while that may be, like, some kind of twisted logic to, well, I'm more survivable, so I need to age less because I'm less likely to die you can abuse the fact that it's hard for them to kill you already, and so everyone can just stand behind you while you hit this tower. Um, especially since your Void doesn't have Chrono, like, who really cares what he does? But you're getting out CS'd by a Phantom Assassin, who's the same rank as you, which is kind of a shame. I think it's fine if you guys aren't going to go high ground. Cut the waves. Keep them locked in their base. Um, if you have Aegis, so much easier for you to get the high ground. This is a really, really good pick. But here we go. Look at how fast this void could have lost his Aegis. Like, he just gets Blade call and dies.
you should be chilling a little bit because you don't have uh, you don't have your ult, but it works out because you guys are stronger. And that's GG. So I hope this was somewhat informative. I think I can show you a couple things in a lobby about like farming efficiency and patterns and stuff on Alk that will be helpful. But for the most part, like on your um, like mid play, I think you don't draw aggro correctly ever. I think you like miss so many easy stacks that you could have because the opponents are bad. Um, like you're not bringing out regen, which means you're scared of getting hit, which means it's harder for you to last it because the enemy heroes are going to hit you when you try to last it. Um, and then itemization if you're going radiance you basically have to get a manta like, it's just way too good um if you want to go ac like that's fine you get an ac a little bit later but the there's just way too much utility for manta in that game alone besides the fact that it's really good on your hero i know it's not a strength item in your strength hero but move speed uh, benefits alk because i believe his ultimate gives some additional move speeds so you can kind of like double up on that ability and then the illusions get your chemical rage so they have the additional uh like ms and attack speed and stuff like that so i'm gonna end this and i will send it to you at some point